In this video, we're going to be talking about derivatives and introducing them, and we're going to be using average velocity and instantaneous velocity to do so. Just keep in mind, this is your fourth video. The first one was limits three ways. The second one was continuity. The third one is algebraic continuity. So in your notes, open up to the next spot. This is your fourth uh, video notes here, and if I were you, I would pause now and jot this stuff down. And then press play so you can listen to what I'm going to say and possibly add more comments on the side. So our motivating question here is how do we measure instantaneous speed, that's the key here, instantaneous speed, if the velocity of an object is not constant? Think back to the very first day of class. We had the activity, we had that car, it had two trial runs. In the first run, it had a constant speed, so the instantaneous velocity was very easy to find. It just did slope because the slope was constant. The second one, the speed was not constant. It was something like that. And that one was much harder to find an instantaneous velocity for. It's very difficult to find the speed of an object at an instant in time. That was one of the main questions that scientists hundreds of years ago were trying to find, and that was one of the big things that motivated the study of calculus. Their main solution was, instead of looking at an instant, look at the speed over small intervals containing that instant. That's what we're going to be doing now. So let's take this scenario. Now for this scenario, we're assuming that all the measurements of distance and time are accurate. We're going to throw a grapefruit up in the air at t equals zero seconds. That would be right here, starting six feet off the ground. The grapefruit is going to go up. Here at the max height, it stops for a second, and then it goes down. It speeds up until it splats against the ground. Here's a table of values. Keep in mind this is the time and this is the height. So this table doesn't give us speed or velocity. It gives us time and height. Now since we're going to be talking about velocity and speed here, let me just make a note. If you're in physics, you uh, probably remember this, but velocity has direction. It's a vector. So velocity can be positive or negative. So in this case right here, when the grapefruit's going up, the po velocity's positive, and when the grapefruit's going down, it has negative velocity. Speed, on the other hand, is the magnitude of velocity, meaning it's not a vector, it has no direction, and it's always positive. So speed is the absolute value of velocity. Okay, back to here. Our goal is we want to find the speed of the grapefruit at t equals, let's call this, one second. So we want to find the instantaneous velocity exactly at this point in time. Now from our table, we know that during the first second, from here to here, it travels 84 total feet, 90 minus 6. And during the second second, uh, from 1 to 2 seconds, it travels 52 feet, 142 minus 90. Since it's both um, a one second interval, you can see that during the first second, it travels faster than during the second second. It's already starting to slow down. Now, we're going to put a definition here. This is going to be a very, very important definition for the rest of the year. We're going to let S of T be the position. It's very common to let S be position, V be velocity, and A be acceleration. So we're going to let S be position of an object at time T. We can define the average velocity over a certain time interval as the change in position over change in time. The reason that makes sense is if you were to draw right here, I have time and I have distance. If you were going to find the slope of a function on this coordinate plane, it would be change in y over change in x, which in this case would be change in difference over change in time. And we know change in difference over change in time is velocity. So therefore, the slope on this coordinate plane is the same as the average velocity. Now. Write this down here. Change in position is S of B minus S of A over B minus A, which is equivalent to S of T minus 1 minus, or S of T sub 1 minus S of T sub 0 over T1 minus T naught. This is from here. So draw this coordinate plane down very carefully here. The red is my function. The blue is a secant line through the function. Now right here, I define secant line. A secant line, we're going to be talking about those a lot the next few days. That's just a line through two points on a curve. So a tangent line is through exactly one point and one point only. A secant line is through two points. 
So on this coordinate plane, I have t versus s of t, which is position. I'm going to let my first x value be a, my second one be b. You could also call it, oh, I should call this t naught and t1, sorry. So a and b. So if I hit my function and I go across, that would be the function's value at a, so s of a. If I move up and go across, this would be my function's value or the height at b. So the height of b minus the height of a all over b minus a. This blue triangle gives us that visual here, this guy right here. The change in y over change in x is change of s over change in t using our variables. So this right here is very, very important. That is the slope of a secant line, which I said, oops, right here. So take a minute, write that down carefully, label everything. So if I want to find the average velocity from 4 to 5 seconds and from 1 to 3 seconds, I recopied my table right here so we can see it. From 4 to 5 seconds, what am I going to be doing is s of 5 minus s of 4 all over 5 minus 4. And this right here is supposed to be an s. There we go. From 4 to 5 seconds, the uh, average velocity is negative 44 feet per second. The negative means it's moving downward. So again, let's use that same formula, s of b minus s of a, all over b minus a, here from 1 to 3 seconds. I did s of 3 minus s of 1, all over 3 minus 1. From 1 to 3 seconds, the average velocity is 36 feet per second. So average velocity, it can be useful, but it's not really going to help us find the velocity at exactly 1 second, especially with values like these, which are far apart and nowhere near 1 second. Let's get a closer answer or at least as close as we can get using the values in our table. So let's do from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 2. So right here I did s of 1 minus s of 0 all over 1 minus 0. Then I did s of 2 minus s of 1 all over 2 minus 1 using this formula here. And I got 84 feet per second from 1 to 2 sec or from 0 to 1 seconds and 52 feet per second from 1 to 2 seconds. Now these numbers are really far apart, so that's not accurate or helpful. So we're going to need a better table with some better values. Luckily, we have the actual function that gave us these values right here. We're going to use the function now to get even better values. One thing to keep in mind is we can, this is very important here, we can't define instantaneous velocity as a ratio like we did average velocity because this would require us to divide by the total change in time, which would be zero for instantaneous velocity, and we can't divide by zero. So remember, average velocity was this. And average velocity, there is a change in time. For instantaneous velocity, this change in time would be zero, and you can't divide by zero. Okay, so what we're going to do here is draw three number lines here. So pause, take a minute, and write this down, and then I'll explain it when you unpause it. We're going to use this function to estimate the average velocity at t over 1, at t equals 1, using increasingly smaller and smaller interval, intervals. Let's start with the change in t being 0.1. So to estimate the speed at exactly 1, let's use 0.9 first, and then we'll use 1.1. So I'm going to plug 0.9 into here, and it's 83.01. I plug 1.1 into here, I get 96.64. So already these values are looking closer, so that's good. Keep in mind that these are heights. They're not velocities yet, because s is position. So let's use this formula right here to get the average velocity. First, let's do the average velocity between 0.9 and 1 second. I plug into my function, I use the heights that I got right here, and I get 69.6 feet per second. From 1 to 1.1 second, I find the heights of 1.1 and 1, which I have here. And I plug in the actual function values, and I get 66.4 feet per second. So this is good, because these two velocities are way closer together than 84 and 52 were. Let's get even closer. Now let's let the change in time just be 0.01.
So I'm going to plug 0.99 and 1.01 into here. And these are my new heights, 89.318 and 90.678. Again, I find the average speed from 0.99 to 1, the average speed from 1 to 1.01. .01. I plug into my average velocity formula. I put in my actual function heights. And look, these numbers are even closer. This is good. 68.2 and 67.8. They're less than one apart. Okay, let's get even closer. Now, I'm going to save you some time here. Rather than writing all that stuff again, I'm just going to give you the numbers here. So f of 0.999 was 89.932. And f of 1.001 was 90.068 and whenever you do it and you plug into this formula right here which I'm not going to have you write just to save you a little bit of time here they agree to one decimal place so the average speed from 0.999 to 1 was 68 and the average speed from 1 to 1.001 was 68 so finally we have some values that agree at least a point or at least to one decimal point so just to emphasize one more time what happened here when the change in time was 0.1 we had 69.6 and 66.4 when the change in time was smaller it was 0.01 we had 68.2 and 67.8 feet per second and when the change in time was just 0.001, which is very, very small, look how close our average velocities are. They're basically the same thing. The last thing I want you to write down are these notes here. We will discuss these in class more, but just write them down now so you don't have to write them down later. So things that you should notice. As the time, or as the size of the time interval shrank, so as we went from 0.1 to 0.01 to 0.001, the values of the velocity on each side got closer together. Eventually, they were 68. The same thing. To get the velocity at exact, or to get the velocity to more decimal places, so we had it to one decimal place, but we want them to be the same at every decimal place. You would have to keep using smaller and smaller interval, intervals on either side of one. So maybe like 0.999999 forever and ever. 0.0000001. Keep going and going and going. The average velocities, this is important here, approach exactly 68, which is the true instantaneous velocity. Because we have numbers approaching as the change in time gets smaller, we can talk about limits here. So 68 is the limit of the average velocities. The average velocities approach a limit as the time interval gets smaller and smaller. Now this part here, I want you to write down. I'm going to show you an animation of it using calculus and motion, just so you know it's the software I have. So when you write this down, you might be thinking you're not really sure what's going on, at least here. But when I draw a picture and um, show it to you on the software, it'll make more sense. What we're going to start doing is interpreting average velocity as a slope, which lets us visualize graphically what's happening as the time interval gets smaller. So as your time interval goes to zero, meaning it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the secant line, which is an approximation, gets closer to and will actually rotate into the tangent line, which is the true instantaneous velocity. Another way of thinking about this is as your time interval approaches zero, the slope of the secant line approaches the slope of the tangent line, and another way of saying it, which we kind of already said, as the change in time goes to zero, the average velocity approaches instantaneous velocity. So the big thing to keep in mind here is this. Instantaneous velocity at a point is the slope of the tangent line at a point on a position versus time graph. So tomorrow I'll give you pictures to put in your notes and we'll, do some, we'll be doing some stuff on um, the software.